Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for tuning in to another great episode of the Mark and Andre Podcast Show. I'm your host, Mark Flores. Mm-hmm. Alongside with me is the father of Lyricology 101, the founder of Lyricology 101, the discoverer, my co-host, Andre Gaynor. What it do? It does really well, actually. I'm glad you asked. Very glad that you know. This is the first episode, episode 52 of the Mark and Andre Podcast Show, that is on Spreaker.com, and I am excited. On Spreaker.com? Not Spreaker, iHeartRadio. I'm also very tired. <laughs> it's, it's on both. It's on both. Yes. iHeartRadio won't be upset about that. I know. Definitely not. The topics that we have for you guys tonight is, why has Donald Trump signed these executive orders so quickly? Is there an agenda that he has planned that a lot of people aren't able to see? Mm-hmm. The other topic that we have as well is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was able to modify his G-Class Mercedes-Benz to be all electric. And we'll go into more details on why that's going to affect us here domestically in the United States. The, the Mark and Andre podcast show is brought to you guys by Game Swappers. Game Swappers, buy, sell, and trade your retro games and next-gen consoles. That's PS1 to the Xbox One and to the Nintendo 64 with retro consoles as well. You can hit them up on uh, Instagram at G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers, buy, sell, and trade. Perfect. Make sure you guys hit up Retro Respect 8 at the Finish Line Sports Bar and Grill, Mm -hmm. located... uh, on the border of Pomona and Laverne at the Finish Line Sports Bar and Grill, mm-hmm. you can come by, sell, and trade retro games. I'm going to come with a few Laserdisc, Laserdisc players. The event is on Sunday from 12 to 7, mm-hmm. and I'm also going to be heading out early because of the Royal Rumble, but that's neither here nor there. You didn't know. You didn't know. Don't, don't tell nobody. You didn't know nothing. Don't snitch. Yo, Mark said he going to leave. Yo, I'm already snitching. Damn. I'm already hitting up game swappers. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, mm. Do they know? I don't think so. Nah, they don't. The, um, the other topic I wanted to get out of the way, too, I forgot because I just have the article in front of me. But President Obama, ex-President Obama, actually sent $221 million to the Palestinians in a last-ditch effort before he left office. And we'll go into more details on why I, you have to find that as odd as an American citizen or even uh, internationally as well, why you should find that odd. Or why you should give up, up period. Exactly. Andre, how are you doing today? Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm good. I'm That's good. good to hear. Good just, to hear. You know, don't, don't let the existential dread hit you, man. Just stay positive, smile, and just enjoy life. That's how I'm feeling. That is the best piece of advice you can give our listeners because we literally have nothing but the worst things to talk about <laughs> in considering the fact that we're going to be talking about Donald Trump and this guy brings a negative aura. It's, it's, you know yeah, what I mean? It's, but it's, it's like beating a dead horse at this point, I think. It's something it's you have to discuss. Yeah, but it's predictable almost, but he's fucking up. Yeah, exactly. So Donald Trump signed executive orders to... To further the uh, the Dakota pipeline to actually go through with it, keep in mind this is still pending a few uh, a few uh, permits, etc. To actually keep to keep it going forward, but as of now, he's actually gave the go ahead to get it started at least. Yeah, and that's that's enough fuel to the fire. Exactly, and that's enough to get everyone upset because there's been about a million people talking about it on social media mm-hmm. because this issue was being protested by a lot of people. I mean, there was people earlier on, uh, about three or four weeks ago, we even did an episode about it, that people were tagging themselves in North Dakota. Not and being co- there, but, you know, just tagging to... And just protesting the right. fact that they, uh, the fact that this is, this is wrong because you are trying to start a pipeline on sovereign land that is land exclusively... To Native Americans. To the Native Americans. Mm-hmm. And... It's one of those issues where it's like, wow, you're really putting yourself in a bad position here as the president Mm -hmm. by having you go ahead and sign this document. Let's get it started. Let's get that thing that a lot of people were 
against. Let's get it started. Well, that's the Let's thing. stir there's some shit huge, up. There's a huge backlash on this event itself. There's a lot of moral issue with it. Mm-hmm. And basically, the president said, I don't give a fuck, do it. And that's what makes it such a big deal. I was reading when I was scrolling through on my phone, and I saw that he was signing it live. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is this it? With you the, have to be with, kidding with me. With the smug expression of a 12-year-old boy. Yeah, that's how he kind of looks. That's how he's, he always looks like. Just he has that Dennis the Menace hair, <laughs> with except minus the cowlick. Right, right. So, but having Donald Trump sign all these executive orders, including an executive order to um, to uh, eliminate himself from the eliminate the United States from the Pacific Coast Trade uh, Agreement as well, this should be alarming to you guys. The fact that he's doing things that aren't benefiting the U.S. citizens themselves. But they're actually just benefiting businesses within the United States. Mm-hmm. That should ring an alarm to you uh, because the fact is, is that that's who he's catering to day one. Right. You know, these executive orders have only benefited the business sector and nobody else. Right. Signing orders like this go against the views of what million peop- millions of people are for. Mm-hmm. And this is a sign of the direction this gentleman is headed. It's almost like you can see that this is all about... He's taking a full-fledged economic business route. Like, he's running the country like a business. And it's a bit... Like, it's a little too predictable. Exactly. It's like, I, I didn't think he'd be that damn on the nose about it, but he is. Like, he's fucking... <laughs> he's just like, hey, this is a company now. Do- I own America, so it's a company. He's doing the stuff... Well, politically, he's doing the things that really turn turn an eye, you know, because signing executive orders is pretty much saying, all right, I'm not going to go through Congress. I'm not going to go through the, the, the Supreme Court. I'm just going to go and just do it myself. Right. And with this, I have a I have a I have a crazy theory, Andre. But the thing is, is I'm I'm thinking that he's doing this because he wants to be impeached. You think Donald Trump is going out of his way to deliberately to deliberately get impeached? Think about this. He's the fuck would he do that for? The the thing he's the reason why he's doing this is that he's basically getting on the bad side of the American people. Mm-hmm. And as soon as he as soon as he does something that just takes it overboard. This is already him signing the, uh, to to start the North Dakota pipeline operation is bad enough. Mm-hmm. But we're talking if he gets on some serious level of actually getting the American people to actually sign, you know, sign petitions to actually get them, uh, get them to get an actual impeachment calling started. Mm-hmm. This is going to start the whole plan to have Mike Pence come in for, as vice president mm-hmm. to start to take to actually being president because this guy he, he he's, has well, no political experience at all. At all, I guess because I see where you're coming from. It's like he's running his campaign all over again. When he was running the campaign, Mm -hmm. all he did was uh, he rose controversy to get all the attention of the media. All of it. And he's like monopolizing the media right now. Every decision he's made has been publicized. All of his tweets have directly offended multiple people. He's just caused an uproar in every fucking direction. Like, it's like he's doing it on purpose. I'm just waiting for, like, I'm like, how much crazier. Are you going to go? And that's what I'm like anticipating. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, he might be trying to get impeached deliberately. But at the same time, it's like he's done so much damage. I don't know what the fuck his goal is outside of that. Well, the Republicans have control over, over the whole White House as a whole. Like with the Senate, with, um, with the actual uh, – with the president himself, he is a Republican. So now we have – we have a situation where the what, oh I'm sorry we have a situation here where Donald Trump himself oh man I lost my train of thought oh that's cool Donald Trump is fucking up exactly there you go no but that, see, you back on track. but with the 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 thing that I think he wants to do is that no one wanted to elect Mike Pence mm-hmm. as an actual as an actual president mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to go no one wanted to elect Mike uh, Mike Pence as a uh, as a pre- president himself, so what he did, he probably he's taken the back route mm-hmm. in having okay. I'm gonna d- just basically stir the pot so much that I'm gonna stir the pot so much that I'm gonna have 
Mike Pence come from from the vice president slot to actually become president. That's dumb. That's a lot of work. Exactly. <laughs> That's a lot of work to be the fucking president, man. And then, okay, so what what other controversial moves has he made? He's done the Dakota Access Pipeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's okayed it. Yeah. Um, what else? What else did we have? I mean, he, what was? The, I can't remember the uh, bill that he signed for abortions. I know a lot of people were tripping on that. That's what started the the women's march. The thing that happened with Mike Pence and Donald Trump together to actually start that whole women's march is that they're going to stop uh, stop having. Uh, they're going to cut federal aid to Planned Parenthood. Okay. So basically, those abortions aren't going to be funded by the government. By the government, and you have to pay full price. exactly, you have to pay full price for that. <laughs> no more discounts. On that. No more discounts. No more hookups. There's no. You can't bring the coupon to Planned Parenthood. The and that's the thing about what Mike Pence has. His ideals are straight. He's an old-fashioned Christian man, and I'm not trying to say that, <laughs> but this is this is how he believes, mm-hmm. and that's how Mike Pence has been for a majority of his political career. And this guy is just the way his train of thought goes; it's old school. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, if, my, if they put Mike, because you want to hear my true opinion, I'm afraid that Trump's going to get assassinated. I don't think I'm supposed to say that out loud, but I'm I have true fear. That this will be the first time, like, he's just straight up going to get sprayed. Like, is, is he, it, he's going too far too fast. Do you, when President Obama was elected into office, did you have more of a fear that he was going to get assassinated? Or what about, on a scale from Donald Trump to President Obama, who do you, what, like, your fear scale, like, who do you think is, was more of a target now at this point? Because I think Donald Trump is more of a target for being assassinated than Barack Obama was at his point when he was president. Mm-hmm. Well, because there wasn't even a scare with Barack. But I can... He dodged constant assassination attempts. There would be plenty of speeches where he ran for the majority, just ran back and forth across the stage while he dodged bullets, oh shared his legislation and then his positions on where he was and what he wanted to do. Uh-huh. I, I recall this constantly throughout the years. I've seen people throw grenades at him and he just catches them and you know hands them off to a CIA agent. He's done tons of, of, of surviving throughout the years. I just feel like Donald Trump this time around isn't really – I feel like he's just waiting to get popped. Like he wants it. Like he's, he's just open for it. He wants the attention to get hurt. Like there's no he's, way that he's he, – because look at him. Like even the picture that we have up of him, that is the best expression of Donald Trump because it's exactly his personality. He doesn't give a fuck. He just doesn't care. He's got his balls to the wall and he doesn't give a shit. And I think that attitude is going to get him I hurt. think in this photo right here, it looks like that he's actually going to start saying fuck. <laughs> he's like, like little, fuck America. Like, Well, that's what he's doing right now. He's giving the biggest F you to America because oh, the the whole the, – well, the main upsetting thing that he's doing is that he's taking the most, the most focused on uh, event – and of the last like two or three months, he's now signed the go ahead for doing what they protested against. Mm-hmm. The American people protested against. Exactly. And now he's just he ended up Native going Americans. for it. So. But the um, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to get across too is that, you know, maybe there's this whole agenda to where he's actually wants to he just wants to have he Mike Pence become vice uh, do you, president. Do you think he's like Donald Trump actually kind of like he went too deep and he's like, oh, shit, I didn't actually expect to win. <laughs> like, and he's trying to find a way out. Like, who? But he he's going with it. I think he he's rolling the with the punches. He loves the feeling. He loves the power. So I think that there, that's another side of it. It's like I think he's really enjoying his position and he's going a little too far. He's feeling himself. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like he's. I don't know. He's he's confusing me because I don't see a path, like a direct path to a success of some kind for America. If he's going down this route, I just feel like he's going all business and that's going to fuck something up. I yeah. can't figure out what's going to be fucked up, but I know that a huge amount of people are going to be outraged. Have you seen the backlash of his supporters? That Like that was a that well, was kind of a joke for a while. Like, yeah, that they like, well, we're in too deep now, so we right. have to just go with it. Right. And, yeah. and there's a number of people that is like – because he – didn't he freeze government spending or uh, – Government pay? Of well, because they've shut down uh, funding for the VA. Yeah. And I was like, as soon as he did that, I was like, yeah, this guy's really not going to be on the side of anybody right now. He well, no one's going to be on his side, right. I should say. So the main things that you guys need to take away from this segment is the fact that it looks like he's been bought. And 
Big time. Because Big any, time. any executive orders during the first couple of days of your presidency that pertain solely to business, you can tell that that's where his main focus is at. Mm-hmm. He's and not worried about shocking. national security in any fucking regard. No, yeah. Um, and for him building a, a U.S.-Mexico uh, border, for reinforcing the border, I think it's foolish mm-hmm. because they're, it's, they're, <laughs> it's just nothing but a big government project. Right. You know? But, but, but the amount of money that, that will be placed into this wall, that money could have gone to a number of... Of locations within the nation that needs that shit, man. That same that same amount of spending just rings bells of how many how many time how much money we actually spent during the uh, war in Afghanistan. We spent we spent two trillion dollars on on of oh, the budget on actual wars, military, you know, just all of that. Mm-hmm. We spend that much money, and that can go to us. That can you know go to within the infrastructure of the United States itself, not anywhere else. But just be aware of that, guys. You guys have to, you know, if that if Donald Trump being elected didn't raise a big flag enough, these are <laughs> big notice, ass flags. If you didn't now. notice that Trump is president by now, um, yes, that's the thing though. You can't not see him. That's I've, I've been trying to do a social media blackout. And yeah. There's nothing I can do. It's hard, I'm man. Still, no matter what I do, he's everywhere. He just recently yeah. did a one-on-one interview um, live with I, – I forgot what the news outlet was, but I watched a little bit of it with my mom while she yeah. was recovering. And it was like, this man is insane. This man is insane, and I'm afraid because I'm like – I actually believe that Donald Trump is very, very intelligent. Yeah. He's very – he might be more business savvy than anything. I almost feel like sometimes he's playing ignorant. Um, but as I watched it, it seemed like he was putting on a performance because he was just outlandish for no reason. I get that a lot from him. He's a, he's more of a showman. Yeah. In some of the interviews that he does, there's two separate cadences to him actually when he speaks. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. even if he actually talks to an interviewer, mm-hmm. or if he actually speaks uh, to like during a speech. Yeah. Like his inauguration speech. It's hilarious. Sounds. Nothing like when he actually gets interviewed by a uh, news anchor or anything. I mean, it's two separate people, mm-hmm. and he, he he's trying to play he's trying to play the route, man. Right, right. So uh, yeah, when it comes to Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump, uh, we have to acknowledge him as who he is. Um, yeah, he could definitely be sabotaging himself. He could definitely be setting up for something that none of us can foresee. There's a lot of shit going down, man. I, I, at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you, Mark. Like I've been kind of holding back on Trump. I've been kind of just stepping back and letting him fuck things up because that's what he wants us to do. He wants us all to be mad. Like, he wants us to be tripping. Like For him to, to day on the daily, it mm-hmm. seems like every day he's done something new and offensive. Yeah, exactly. That, to the point where he's in all of our mouths. He's in our show now. We're talking yeah, about him. and we have to talk about him just because it's... One of the most relevant things we have to discuss. He's the most immature president I think we've had. One of our, uh, one of the people in the live chat wants to make the mention, and I caught this right now, is that neither did Ronald Reagan, as far as not knowing political experience. He was an actor. At least Trump knows business. Well, Ronald Reagan did start doing political, uh, uh, doing uh, politi- having political experience before he even started becoming president. I believe he was a governor of. Uh, he was a governor of a state, I believe it was California, before he actually started doing uh, becoming the president. So he had political experience before, before he even started being a president. Not like Donald Trump, where he had failed businesses, and then he started becoming the president, which is failed crazy. Businesses. I known, appreciate the co- appreciate the comment though. Known addictions, uh, known social problems. We have recordings of him. Uh, here's how it goes, right? In in the world of politics. You, ha- especially to be the president, yeah. you have to be fucking squeaky clean, like mm-hmm. like legit squeaky clean. And if you're not squeaky clean, you have a huge cover up. Like you have a great team that's keeping your everything ass scrubbed, right? Because when it comes to uh, George Bush Jr., uh, there's a ton of fucked up things that he got away with, but they hit it. They yeah. hit it well. But in this case, it's like Trump has his history out in the open. Everybody knows what he's capable of. Everybody knows his downfalls and his mistakes, and they're, they're publicized. Yeah. But this is the first time that he broke through politics. Like, he actually shattered the boundaries of fucking politics, and he's doing whatever he wants to do. 
Yeah. He is a great representation of the American people for real, but at the same time, it's like... <laughs> Where anyone could become president. Just sign up. Now, Just sign like, up and put your name on the ballot. Fuck, man. Insert name here. Insert name here. Oh, you're, you worked at McDonald's? Well, you're qualified. Like, it doesn't matter. He's a public figure, and, and they're utilizing that. Like, that might have been enough to propel him to where he is today. Shit's whack. Man. Yeah. And one more. One of the... Just to wrap up the final point that we wanted to... This is going to be raising flags to you guys here on the Mark and Andre show. Him signing business-oriented bill uh, executive orders should be alarming to you, especially since nothing paired with that actually benefited the American people as citizens themselves, only for the sake of, oh, I'm just bringing jobs, bringing jobs to sovereign land, sovereign native American land that we promised that we weren't going to touch. Mm -hmm. But another topic that I wanted to bring up too is that before President, uh, ex-President Obama left office, I have an article here from the good people at Yahoo that it says that he actually sent $221 million to the Palestinians before he left office. And they pretty much – in this article, it's, it states that there was really no need for him to be sending it because there's a lot of tension going on within Palestine where the actual – uh, the actual dictator himself, his name is Muhammad Abbas, <laughs> is Sorry. actually 11 years in into a four-year political run that started in 2005. Mm. So it's pretty much looking like he's never going to leave that position. Uh, one, thing to, one thing to note, guys, is that $221 million, $221 million adjusted into the currency of uh, Palestine – uh, Iraq and and uh, and the Middle East is a lot of money. It's <laughs> okay. Whole, I thought you had like a. Sat- <laughs> it's a whole lot of money. No, and I actually do. I actually do have the. Uh, you, the, the long ass setup to it's a lot of money. No, it is a lot of long money. Long ass professional and, opinion, fucking eclipsed by it's a lot of money. Eight hundred million dollars worth of uh, Israeli shekels, two point five billion dollars of Iraq dinars, Damn. and four billion one hundred seventy seven million two hundred thirty one thousand. 500 Egyptian pounds. Damn. So this is the, these uh, three currencies aren't just separate currencies themselves. They're actually the currencies that all three of them uh, actually Palestine uses collectively. Okay. Okay. Still a lot of money. That's a lot of fucking money. Um, I mean, well, what do you feel about this? How do you how do you see it? Federal aid itself to other countries always always rings suspicions to me because if it's a country that we don't. If it's a country that benefit, the country is going to benefit from it, right? But how do we benefit from it? Where's like, what do we get in return? If I if I lend you money as a banker, mm-hmm. I'm expecting what back? Interest. Yes. I don't think that there are Palestine's in it in a position to give me back money plus interest. Exactly. You know, except the fact that. They might have oil reserves. I don't, see, I don't know that oh, whole wow. situation, but still, giving two hundred twenty-one million dollars to a country in federal aid, mm-hmm. I don't think it's right. You know, I, I mean, you don't know what the deal is, though. That, exactly. To be honest, it, that honest, Obama could seriously have owned them like you know five dollars technically. Like you could think of it like that. Like, oh damn, I still owe you five dollars. Let me just pay that shit out before I'm out. <laughs> Let me just write like, this check just out take, real quick. Just take, take that dough, and I don't want to talk to you guys. Don't fucking come to my house tripping. <laughs> Brock's so, all like, as soon as the guy comes, answers the phone. What was his name? Muhammad Abbas. Muhammad Abbas. Oh, Mr. Abbas, how you doing? Oh, oh, that money. <laughs> oh, let me wire it over to you. You take PayPal. <laughs> What's your PayPal address, bud? Let me send it. This guy, man, I feel that he just did it as a last bailout, not to not to rise any suspicions, uh, but it's it just still like, it no, still worries no me. No loose thread, baby. You know, no like, loose threads. The fact that we still give uh, foreign countries federal aid just doesn't. I mean, uh, yeah, rub wanna, me the right way. Go that route. I mean, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Oh, oops, wrong one. Uh, Flint, Michigan's water uh, situation. It's about fifty-five million to sixty million to fix this problem, and they're just throwing money in every other direction. Yep. Every other direction. And it they still haven't even started that Flint situation, too. Just they're to, not going to. Just to just to put it out there. They're not going to. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get all you know exactly racial. But you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're aware. You're not you know. going to get into anything racial, but then you go on with a Bill Cosby <laughs> impersonation. I think that was my bit. <laughs> the uh, Trump's going to be a great president. Wow. Uh, 
It, it sure right. certainly looks like that. They, we just read a comment uh, that Trump's going to be a great president. So, yeah, uh, yeah hopefully with all these executive orders signed, they should be the green light mm-hmm. to, to <laughs> for you to believe that. But the next thing that we wanted, uh, the next thing that we wanted to discuss, Andre, if you wanted to bring up that one, the the story about the gentleman that actually was <laughs> was innocent the whole time. Oh, the uh, the breaking the. <laughs> Breaking the Emmett Till story, basically. Yes. So, uh, when it comes down to it, the why are you shaking your head? Because <laughs> it's fucking disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's really fucked. It, it is. is fucked up. But, well, you know, for those that are um, in tune to Black history, there was a young man named Emmett Till that was accused of sexually accosting a white woman back in the day. That was a humongous no-no. Like, you yeah. can't do that. That's not going to happen. Um, so he was basically beaten to death, pummeled, mm-hmm. like, to the point where he was not recognizable, and then he was, like, he was fucking dead. So, uh, it comes to show that in today, mm-hmm. not, I don't think it was today, but I think in this week, yeah. they decided to let the news out today, but uh, the woman that accused him of the sexual abuse lied. It was all made up. It was all a lie. So, this young man was brutally murdered for no reason. And I mean, it's, it's like at this rate, like I was telling Mark before the podcast, yeah. this story has been told thousands of times, but it's for like, you know, instead of the person being murdered, they go to prison and they go to prison for like 20 years. And then the person goes, okay, I lied. And then the, the person's released never to be the same again. Yeah. It's almost the equivalent of dying. And, and guess what? The person that lied does not get charged. It's not a situation where she's like, she's an SS officer and they barely found her. Right. You know, at 98 years old, you know, like I remember the story where the 98 year old SS officer was actually still tried Mm -hmm. and got life. Mm -hmm. This isn't that kind of situation. This is more of a, of, this is more of a time where you have someone just like, oh, I made that up. You fucking kidding me? Right. And it's like, and you can't do anything about it. You just, okay, well don't lie no more. Like it's, it's too late. It's first of all, it's too late for her to learn a lesson. So there's nothing they can yeah. do, and it's too late for anything to happen. Emmett Till's super dead. Like, he's been dead. <laughs> he's, like, all the way dead, all the way. Gone. Man. He's not coming back. He's not. And, there's nothing he can say about this shit. So. And the statute of limitations is not going to help out in this case because this is what happened in the 1960s. Right, and I feel like this is just another thing to spark controversy. Every, everyone's pissed off right now. They're race, just trying to piss people off. <laughs> race is the hot topic here. Andre. I mean, okay, what was last week's race topic? Fucking chicken and Popeyes commercials. And now this week we got the Emmett Till situation. Next week is going to be fucking Bill Cosby's back raising more kids. Who gives a fuck? Like, it's, we're, there's always going to be some kind of black controversy. Or, sorry, there's going to be controversy in the African American community because it's going to keep them pissed off. They want black people to be upset. If you got black people upset on some other shit, because I know a number of black people don't give a fuck about what Trump's doing, yeah, because it's just not relevant to their position. You know, the hood does not give a fuck about what Trump's doing to Mexico. You notice how Trump and trap sound almost eerily the same. I have noticed that. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's a, it was, I think it's like a subliminal message. Trump. It's Trump. Dang, I listen to that's Trump Trump's music. Original, now. Like, remember, Trump's real last name isn't Trump. Trump's oh, real last name is Trump. Yeah, it's not... Like, he, seriously, not, I'm not joking right now. Like, his no, original, his original yeah. last name was Drumpf. Dang, so he's kind of like a pro wrestler. Yes. He just changed his name and... He did! No, you can So look that's that, a stage name. You guys can look that up. Look up Donald Trump's real last name. And how, you, you'll find... It's, how, yeah. how many presidents have actually changed their, their name? Uh, wasn't Obama? Well, because he legally has done it, but it's like, I've never heard of... Uh, a president that actually might be went fully would have changed his he name. He might be the first. To actually use his pseudonym within within it. Wait. Yeah, no, he's, I think he's the first. He crazy. might be the first, dude. That's crazy. Sorry, the sound lads are killing it right now with this yo-yo. Like, I wish you guys could see this. I wish you could see the yo-yo tricks that they could do on this one. crazy. The, like, Duncan Butterfly, I can't believe <laughs> this shit. Like, guys. Once again, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Mark and Andre podcast show, the only film, entertainment, and conspiracy theory podcast on Speaker.com. Also available on iHeartRadio and streaming through the Green Theme Productions podcast channel. Mr. Stream Thing. Mr. Stream Thing. GTP. GTP. Spilling cool. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, 
I'm here with my co-host Andre, and we're just talking various uh, various topics, including Donald Trump. Of course, we have to talk about him. The next topic uh, we want to get out of the way is Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mercedes Benz G Class wagon has been modified to be all electric. Now, the G Class wagon is the Mercedes Benz wagon that looks like someone's going on a luxurious safari. You've probably seen it on the streets. Uh, I wish the sound lads would come up with the, a picture of that. What do you mean by the streets? The streets. I'm black. I'm on. I'm on the streets. No, the streets. I'm out, I'm the streets the where block. you drive. Oh, okay. Why do you think everything's a? I, I mean, you know what I'm saying. I just I gotta protect myself, protect my my ego, my psyche, and my people. You live in a nice house. It, There's nothing hood about you. I, I, I'm I'm practicing, man. I just want to make sure that I'm still you know connected. Get ready this summer, boys in the hood too. Boys in the burbs. Oh, featuring. Oh yeah, boy. <laughs> Boys in the Burbs. Boys on the Hood was that movie about racist cops, right? All of them are about racist cops. It doesn't yes. matter which boys. boys the, if it, if it's, it's boys, a spike, if it's Boys in the Hood, Boys to Men, anything with boys in it, <laughs> black people, it's about fucking like baby boy, baby yeah. boys yes. to the hood. <laughs> Leprechaun in the hood. It's about racist cops. About racist cops, man. That was a <laughs> so. Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon has been modified to be all electric. Mm -hmm. It has a range of 185 miles, all electric, Mm -hmm. with a lithium-ion battery that weighs over 1,000 pounds. What the fuck? Yes. Is it one of those batteries that can last for like 10 years? Well, the lithium-ion battery of that capacity is going to last a long time. It's still a telltale sign of how long these actually last. A couple thousand years. But the... This goes to show you that this G this G class wagon itself can be modified to be all electric. Mm-hmm. They are diesel cars first and foremost, mm-hmm. and the um, it just gets to sh- it just goes to show you that any domestic vehicle can be transformed can be transformed into a, a Decepticon all electric <laughs> into an all electric car. Is that the car with the two blue batteries? Yes, those yes. are the two in the photo that. The sound lads are going to show you in a little bit. They're going to show you the either the battery or the G wagon itself. And this comes fully equipped with hydraulics, popcorn machine in the back, uh, inflatable, you know, swimming pool. This uh, was this candy was candy windows. You can lick them, different flavors. Body bags for hookers. Bo- body bags for hookers. If you got to get you know handle that business. This was done in his uh, in his t- uh, state, his home state, home mm-hmm. country of uh, South Central Austria. So he um, he was able to get it modified, but over in Austria, and he was showing it on his Snapchat. I actually follow Arnold Schwarzenegger on Snapchat. It is it is it is hilarious. Hello, Snapchatters. I want to show you my new Jika G wagon, all electric. Yes, and I'm like, wow, man. He was look at the and then look at the size of the battery. It's a 1,000 pound battery, right? And this goes to show you that. All electric, all domestic cars can be modified, but there's another point too: is that we're getting closer and closer to actually becoming an all electric car nation. It's going to start. The only downside that we have is that we cannot charge electric vehicles as quickly as we pump gasoline. As soon as that's done, we're all electric, and there's nothing stopping us because the range of a thousand pound battery on a regular car. Would be upwards of about five hundred to six hundred miles in range. Well, here's the. I mean, you gotta look to the future, dude. You, there's a lot of stuff that we can't foresee, right? Yes. Uh, they're already working on. Uh, it actually exists already. Like Las, for example, this is this is all relevant. Mm-hmm. For example, Las Vegas will be powering their electricity through people's walking. So all oh, those tiles. You know, so the I've tiles, so, yeah. like uh, if you walk on the tiles, it'll trigger electricity mm-hmm. to go into their you know their lighting sources or whatever. So they're already working on methods of charging something while it's still operating. Yeah. So at one point or another, we're going to get – I already know this is coming. So uh, they might do something that's based on the rotation of the tires uh-huh. or the tires themselves will collect uh, some type of energy and then it will circulate into the battery. Oh, cause so it's even going to go into the roads. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're, they're already working on all these different kind of ways to make the electric car work. But at the same time, like we discussed a while back, yeah. you know, big oil doesn't want that shit to happen. So <laughs> – we don't know big, what's going to go down. Big oil as an infrastructure needs to realize that. Oh yeah, and that's a photo of the G wagon itself. It's modified with uh, two two lithium ion batteries that both weigh a total of one thousand pounds. Right. Imagine having that attached to your cell phone. You'll never have to charge your phone ever again. <laughs> I guarantee it. 
And the electric... Uh, 1,000 pounds? Lugging 1,000 pound lithium ion batteries. The electric power will kill you slowly. Yeah. Can you check real quick? I've seen a... Um, um, there's, a, there's a sort of workout tool that, that strengthens your wrist and it has, it's a ball with a weighted ball inside of a little encapsulated, like a little housing. Oh yeah. And you pull a string and the ball, the ball spins and you just rotate your wrist and it keeps some momentum. I think it's like a gyro ball. Or something. Oh yeah. I saw, I saw it, that on one of my feeds. Yeah. It perpetuates the motion. It actually mm-hmm. puts resistance on your wrist so you're able to turn it like it. It was used, my mm-hmm. dad used it for boxing. Yeah. I've seen that someone modified that to charging your cell phone. Uh-huh. So now you can spin it and then, you know, do use that energy. same exercise, keep the ball rolling, and it actually, you can sit there and charge your phone with it. So that's that's another... That's another source. That's another source. That's another unique way to, to, to apply that sort of momentum yeah. into, into the energy. And, and I think that's exactly the technology that you just mentioned that yeah. they're trying to use for the tires. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly, but they're going to have to change the entire structure of tires. Like they're not going to be uh, those rubber wheels. They're actually yeah. going to be balls. Like, um, like they're going to be four balls where the tire would be, and they're trying to figure out a way to, to gain like energy through that process. R- rubber ball for yeah, rubber. Right. It's the, like a mouse. <laughs> it's a big yeah. ass mouse. Your car returns. I like how I like how the automakers have actually taken are actually taking the 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 most obvious baby steps mm-hmm. into electric vehicles like the nissan leaf when i had it has a, had a range of 88 miles 80 miles actually oh, sorry about that 80 miles mm-hmm. knowing the capacity of what that uh, how big that car was it was understandable but right. bigger vehicles the tesla has a range of about 300 plus miles if right. you get the the most supreme package yeah. 300 miles is more than enough for you to actually take out go to your commute to work Come back home, complain to your wife about where's dinner, and then plug it up. I mean, it, it's way more than you need. You know what I mean? What kind of household? Where's dinner? Fucking abusive. It's, where's dinner? It's the future of the fifties, the twenty fifties. <laughs> it's going to come back where's all full circle again. It's going to be a big cycle. The but it's more than enough mm-hmm. for you to to use throughout your commute. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is ahead of this because he's actually modifying cars that were normally made for gasoline. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, hopefully big, he can big fucking gas guzzlers, and, and he's managed to convert them. So I, he's trying to make a statement through his yeah. uh, being an example himself. Yeah. But it's going to take some time before everybody falls into place. But I see where you're, you're coming from. It's yeah. like uh, you know, back in the day, if you had a color television, you were better than everyone, right? Mm-hmm. And then in due time, everyone kind of follows suit. They, every uh, like, let's say from the radio to the television, yeah. that was a huge transition. Uh, uh, people at the top use that as an opportunity to kind of like run the show. Like, exactly. if I have a television, you don't. So um, I can see that translating through this experience that he's doing right now, having an electric vehicle. Hey, see, the, an electric the, vehicle right here is the face that. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Perfect. <laughs> Every time you tell Arnold Schwarzenegger your car is powered by gas, that's the face he uses. That's how. What? Is. What the hell? Um, <laughs> so when it comes down to it, yeah, maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying to be a positive example. Yeah, and and to to bring it all back full circle, when he was governor, he was implementing he was implementing several uh, several mandates that actually never benefited the electric car. Right. You know, he was caught driving, uh, he was caught driving like Hummers, Mm -hmm. big old cars. But when you're trying to be environmentally savvy, like he tried to pull off being governor, Mm -hmm. driving a Hummer. Mm -hmm. Now, after, after he's out of politics, you see where his influence would lie during that point. But now, since he's not, he's out of office and he could pretty much do what he wants. He's actually showing people that it's possible. Mm -hmm. You can modify your car. You can have great range with it as long as you have high capacity and batteries. The only downside to bring it in is that if you ever use an electric car, don't use it long distances. Because you can't charge the vehicle as quick as you fuel up with gas. Understood. You know? So that's all we have for the Mark and Andre show, guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, keep in mind that you could tune into the Mark and Andre show live uh, on the Mr. Stream Thing uh, YouTube channel, and you can also do it through Speaker, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Um, I'm also going to leave the floor here for Andre to give his uh, shameless promotion to Lyricology 101. Yeah, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, peep game, B. Your boy is a rap teacher. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to put y'all on game, but y'all ain't hearing me. So, I got to come at you from a totally different angle. You know what I'm saying? I got to hit you from the 
from the perspective that you expect from somebody that, that be teaching niggas about rap. So well, where did that accent come from? You know what I'm saying? No, I've know. always had this accent be like it's not even it's not a secret. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just letting y'all know I'm dropping game on you niggas. Um, so you know the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Andre Gainer. That's youtube.com slash A N D R E G A I N E R. So basically what your boy does, I take a popular rap song, you know what I'm saying, I break that shit down. Every like from the you know the rhyme schemes to to you know what I'm saying the words you know what I'm saying to the metaphors the meaning flow all that shit you know what I'm saying I break it down for y'all niggas I, I use color coded shit you know I'll let you know what words rhymed and all that and uh, it's just one it's, it's, you know what I'm saying it's killing right now it's killing it's hot cakes you know what I'm saying hot cakes thirty five thousand subscribers you have mad subscribers B thirty five thousand you feel me I'm getting you know what I'm saying we we getting bread we eating we sharing bread we slicing you know what I'm saying we, you we you have a, a a YouTube channel that's mad masculine. It's mad masculine. Mad, mad masculine. You know what I'm saying? No, no feminine shit. We keep femininity fucking... We kill that shit, B. Every day. You Word. know what I'm saying? So, Word. you know what I'm saying? Check out the channel. Once again, that's YouTube.com slash Andre Gainer. That's YouTube.com slash A-N-D-R-E. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but I check out. I love this show. The channel's called Lyricology 101. Check it out. I think you guys will like it. If you guys really want to be surprised by like what rap is is capable of, if you really think rap is like a joke, I will convince you that rap is something like that you couldn't fathom. Check out Lupe Fiasco's mural breakdown. Uh, I'm the only one with one, so if you go to YouTube right now and type in Lupe Fiasco mural breakdown, I will be the first thing you see, and you will learn that the English language is the most complex thing that can be manipulated, and you'll fucking lose your shit. So there you go. Lyricology also, 101. Lyricology also, 101. Also, by the way, uh, make sure to, in case you have uh, office needs, come to the Orange Space in Redlands, California. Orange Space. Redlands, California. The Orange Space. Orange Space. Buy, sell, and trade. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to the Mark and Andre Podcast Show. We'll catch you guys next Friday, 9 p.m., Spreaker.com, IR Radio. Bye.